Good afternoon, everyone. Andy Jacob with the Dot Com Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Show. And today's guest, I've been trying to get on the show for a number of months. He is one of the top realtors in the Sedona, Arizona area, a leading realtor, Alejandro Gutierrez, who works at the Russ Lyons Sotheby's office. He has an expertise in vacation rental and Airbnbs, and he lives in such a beautiful space. If you haven't been to Sedona, you need to go. Alejandro, welcome to the show today. Thank you, Andy. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Wonderful. Now, Alejandro, or may I call you Alex, which would you prefer? It's up to you. I go by both. Some people call me Alejandro, some people call okay. me... Okay. Alejandro, so, you know, you've been able to... Uh, come to Sedona and establish yourself as one of the top leading realtors in the entire city. Uh, tell us a little bit at a high level, like how long you've been to Sedona and, and what your passion about real estate is all about. Well, I've been here for about 13 years. Uh, my wife and I came with our family and kids uh, from Miami. It was a big change because uh, yeah, Miami to Sedona is obviously such a big difference, but uh, it's been a blessing to be here in this in this gorgeous town. We are always um, excited about the things that you can do here and the beautiful scenery and being able to hike and go to the river and even skiing. I mean, come on, in winter, it's only an hour away. So it's just a gorgeous place. Um, we feel like we live in paradise. And, um, you know, the people here are gorgeous, beautiful people from all walks of life. Very cosmopolitan city, if you follow me. Great restaurants. Um, yeah, you know, you walk into any shopping center and, and you'll find people from, you know, Europe, uh, Asia, South America, everywhere. So it's, you know, yeah, we like that. I'm originally from Chile. So that's, you know, I have uh, obviously a Spanish background. Uh, my grandparents were from Spain. And, and uh, so we like that, right? We like that aspect of, of the town that, that has people from, from all parts of the world. See, that's beautiful. And, and in all uh, candor, I've known Alejandro now for a couple of years. He's actually helped me with some real estate transactions. And Alejandro has been able to sort of um, put himself in the position to be one of the leading experts in the Airbnb and vacation rental space in the Sedona area. And, you know, through COVID, some of the Airbnbs throughout the country and throughout the world have had a little bit of a tough time, but sometimes tough times lead to opportunity. And I think Alejandro and I believe the same way that for people watching this that have seen the success of the Airbnb business through the roof for many years and then through COVID, it's perhaps gone down in certain parts of the world. Uh, Alejandro and I both believe that this might even be the best time of all to maybe start getting involved in the Airbnb business. So Alejandro, for people watching this show that you know might want to dip their toe into buying a property to get into the vacation rental space, Give us some words of wisdom that they might be able to uh, glean some information from to help them make a decision. Yeah, well, I think Airbnb or vacation rentals is a is a trend that's here to stay, just like the Uber, um, you know, rental. I mean, taxi service, right? And a lot of these online services are, are here to stay. It's a change of life. What we're experiencing is a different way in which people want to live their lives. I have clients that have decided not to just reside in a single home somewhere and then go on vacation for one or two weeks somewhere. They've decided to own two, three, four different homes in different parts of the country, um, perhaps close to where their kids are so they can go and stay and visit at their own um, place and uh, and then other beautiful places like, you know, may, maybe you want to spend your winter in, in a certain location uh, and then have your primary residence in, in another city. So what's going on is a trend in lifestyle change that's here to stay. Um, COVID is adding another element, which is the work from home aspect that's going to make that transition even faster. And um, it's not going to change or, or go away. People want 
quality of life and they're not into buying the huge mansions as it was perhaps 20, 30 years ago. Um, I'd like to relate a story uh, that I have uh, when we remodeled the house that we live in. We sold a, a bigger house and moved to a smaller house last year and we wanted to put these um, panoramic doors on our house and, and the guy at the at the vendor place uh, said, uh, which happens to be in Scottsdale, I mean, where you live, by the way, he said, um, you know, we don't, we're not selling these doors for huge mansions anymore. Nobody's building these huge mansions. People want to move to smaller places. So that, that kind of stuck with me and it just reflects where we're headed to, especially the new generation uh, millennials. Um, you know, they're not into, you know, excess and, and uh, over, building and overspending in air conditioning or <laughs> heating in a home that you know gets used 10 percent of its space so they're they're much more conscientious i guess than prior generations in in the environmental impact of, of their choices of life so with that said um the vacation rental aspect of having perhaps instead of one huge home and having two smaller homes or maybe three <laughs> uh is i would say starting now and I predict it's going to be a much bigger trend and with working from home you can work from everywhere. Um, I happen to have another place in a um, five-hour drive from here south of here and a place in Mexico called Rocky Point. It's close by you know I leave I take my computer with me and I do my business from there and um, <laughs> what better right you're in the beach you're in Sedona um, so that's that's here to say. I have a client who has four homes, as I said, in this in this uh, situation that they they have one in San Francisco, one here, one in Scottsdale, and one in in, um, in Washington State. So Airbnb or vacation rental, just like uh, Uber taxi service, is here to stay. There's some cities that have been impacted. Obviously, more people are avoiding going to large uh, populated areas like New York, and but. Smaller towns like ours have actually benefited. Um, our occupation rates are higher now and, and uh, our rates are going up because people want to get away from large cities. So vacation rentals here have been positively impacted by the change. See, that's wonderful. And Alejandro, what, what, another way of saying uh, or talking about this sort of opportunity is that we're, we're all connected through technology. More and more people are working out of their homes more and more people are seeing their way clear that they don't need the giant 10 or 15 or 7,500 square foot home. A lot of people are opting to go with smaller homes. Maybe they do multiple homes in different locations. That's and when right. they're at one home, the other three homes are producing some income for them. Is that sort of the idea of what you're saying here? Yes, yes. Thank you for complimenting. That's exactly the idea. When, when, when you're not at the place, you're obviously, you know, renting it, vacation renting the place. And it's very easy to manage. It's a process that, um, you know, almost can be taking care of itself. There are companies out there in every city that are in charge of managing the rentals, making sure that they get cleaned on time. And if the water heater breaks, they'll, you know, take charge of fixing it. So they take all of the, the pain away from, from owning uh, a vacation rental property. They may take 20 to 30% of your, your gross income for that, but, you know, that's worth paying if you don't have to do anything for it and just enjoy the place. So the other benefit is when you arrive to the house and after it's been not used by you for several months, you know, it's going to be spot cleaned and ready for you to go like a five-star hotel because that's what these people do, right? So you get the benefit on all fronts. So that's a great idea. And that's, that's really some valuable information because people that haven't gotten into this sort of way of thinking or this sort of business, because it is a business, you're running a business. That's right. You have an opportunity to own a home, own a rental and have it taken care of by a group of experts that will clean it and manage it for you. So you don't have to worry about getting that two o'clock AM call that a water heater broke when some of your customers are at your vacation rental. Right. The call goes directly to the management company and they handle it all for you for a fee, right? That's correct. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. Very good. So 
you have to wrap your mind around the fact that you're actually running a small business when you're doing these vacation rentals. So for people that really haven't done a vacation rental, do you highly recommend for them to go ahead and, and um, uh, make a handshake deal with one of these companies that are the management companies to kind of get your foot in the door? Do you recommend for them to sort of start it on their own so they can understand the ins and outs of it before they hire the management company? Which way is the best way for them to go? I think it depends on the individual, right? I mean, the, the benefit of doing it on your own is obviously you maximize your, your, your income uh, from the property. And some people just have the time. They have the extra time. And I think a key, a key element is to live close to where your vacation rental is if you're going to manage it yourself. Because the day that, that you get that call and something happens, you want to take care of it quickly and have the proper service um, addressed, right? Uh, for instance, I manage my own vacation rentals. I have a few in Sedona and I don't use a company. And I, it doesn't take a lot of time actually to do it. But I do have a contract with a plumber, for instance, uh, for <laughs> emergency service. They have to be there within the same day, 24-hour service, right? I pay the extra and, and because it's a business and you're not going to try to save a few pennies here and there because, you know, with a home warranty that you call and they call you back the next day and then they send you a plumber within two or three days. Um, by that time, you're, you're, you're dead in the water with your vacation rental. So, you know, that's not difficult at all to handle. So if you're doing it yourself, the key is to have a good cleaning crew and uh, you need people that are willing to work Saturdays and Sundays. And uh, vacation rentals have become a pretty extensive um, service everywhere. So there's companies that do this and, and they hire the people that are going to be willing to work on a Saturday or on a Sunday on, uh, on the 25th of December, perhaps they have to come in and clean a house. So you have to have the right people to do the right job or else you're going to end up doing it yourself on the 25th of December. <laughs> That's right. So let's talk about sort of someone watching this show that's been to Sedona. They want to get into this business. Sedona has millions of visitors coming in every single year. Many of them are looking for places to stay um, so if I'm looking at perhaps buying my first vacation rental, do the metrics make sense for, for a person to investigate financing that rental? In other words, after you get a mortgage on a rental property and you put your down payment down, do you see a certain type of cash flow that they're able to receive based on what's happening in Sedona? In other words, do I have to come in and buy that vacation rental with cash to get cash flow that makes sense? Or can I finance a vacation rental in Sedona and have it cash flow for me after I pay the mortgage? That's going to be a question a lot of people are going to ask. Yeah, that's a very, very good question. And I'm, I want to break it in two because the, the mortgage question with the current interest rates is a whole topic in itself, as you might imagine. But let me give you an, a perspective. Um, if you buy cash, you can look at a 12 to 14% rate of return on your vacation rentals. If you buy a property, let's say within the 500 to $800,000 uh, price tag, if you go higher on, on your purchase price uh, because you want to use a house that you know has nicer finishes or a bigger house or whatever, you know, a million plus dollar home, you may see that rate of return be a little lower just because the occupancy may not be as high, you know, you would have to rent that property at 400, 500, 600 or more dollars a night and not everybody can afford that. So the other thing I try to, to avoid is, is having um, very large properties and, uh, you know, within the 500 to 800, you're usually looking at, a, you know, 2,000 to 3,000 square foot home with, uh, you know, three, maybe four bedrooms at the most, but you, I prefer, because I've had the, the experience of owning larger homes, the, I prefer the, the homes that can only house one family group as opposed to have housing two family groups or more because those lend themselves to parties and bigger groups and more mess in the house and it's just more maintenance and more issues. So um, maybe even neighbor complaints. So you've got to, 
you know, if you want to keep your life simple and you're looking at this as a business, then, you know, go for the smaller house um, and, and uh, you'll be fine. So you're looking at a, a good rate of return if you buy it in cash. However, now, if you buy in, uh, with, with a loan, obviously the, the loan is going to take some of that um, return away, uh, but you're still going to be, you know, in the in the six to eight percent probably rate of return which is good and then you also have the property and you're appreciating on the property when i quote these rates of return these are net these are after paying every expense in the house including property taxes insurance repairs and everything so it's a very good uh, rate of return and then you also have the benefit of capital appreciation on the property um, you have the benefit and i'm going to come back to the interest mortgage in a minute, okay, but you have the benefit of um, of um, the depreciation, right? Yeah, which, which is something you can take down to your personal tax return on most uh, transactions, LLCs, and whatnot. And then, if if you buy the property under an LLC, you have twenty five percent of your income, net income, um, exempt from taxes. So it's it's you win on all sides. Uh, if you buy the property and you furnish it, let's say you spend 20 grand in furniture, you can expense your furniture, but then you can also capitalize. So you get the double benefit of, of, of the furniture. That's only under an LLC type of uh, approach. So from all standpoints, you get lots of additional benefits that, you know, end up all adding up into your, your um, rate of return and, and, and quality of, of investment. Now, let's talk about mortgage rates. Um, rarely, um, we have these mortgage rates at two and a half to three percent. And uh, it's incredible that you can get a loan today for a 30 year mortgage at two and a half to three percent. Those banks are not going to be making money on those loans, and you know that. Uh, the, uh, you know, within a few years, when inflation starts to pick up, uh, uh, there's no way. And and you know, we the taxpayers are probably going to end up bailing out. You know, these loans because they're going to be non-producing loans. But for you, the buyer who has the loan, having a, a two and a half percent mortgage is 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 laughing all the way to the bank with, with, with your money. And think of this, um, gallon of milk today in the supermarket, perhaps five, $5. And within a few years, and we're not far away from that situation, that gallon of milk is gonna cost $10. If you have a, a rental and you're paying, you know, $2,000 a month in the rental, in, in a few years, that rental is gonna, you're gonna have to pay 4,000 for that same rental. Um, however, if you have a 30-year mortgage and you're paying $2,000 a month on your mortgage payment, that stays fixed. So within a few years, you're going to compare your mortgage at $2,000 with a $10 a gallon milk and everything, everything else goes up, including your income, your salary from whatever producing uh, income you, you get, right? So the, the, let's put it the, the the real pain of paying that mortgage payment goes down to half. If you have a vacation rental and you're charging $200 a night today, you'll be charging $400 a night in a few years. So your rate of return with a mortgage will also be very significant uh, and um, very profitable with a mortgage. So the key here is, is if you're going to buy a property like that, you want to, you know, keep the property for, for a few years and benefit from, from those uh, low rates. So that's my opinion. Um, we rarely have this, this situation going on. I actually lived through that in, in Latin America uh, with one of my first homes. And uh, we saw exactly the same thing that's happening in the U.S. now with all the money printing. And uh, I mean, it's just too much what's going on right now and it's going to have an impact no doubt so i i started paying you know, to stay with the example the two thousand dollar a month mortgage and ended up paying a thousand dollar a month mortgage in real dollars just within a few years and it was so incredible to see how you could have a property and paying so little so take advantage of the situation 
today. And, um, you know, if you haven't remortgaged your home loan, uh, get one right now at two and a half percent. <laughs> See, that's a great point what Alejandro is making here. And while you read the newspapers and you read online that people are maybe running away from this because the, the vacation rental business maybe has taken a dip through COVID, it's counterintuitive to do exactly what Alejandro says to do, which is to get in now because the timing right now is a fantastic timing to get in with the low rates. And you're going to get in for your vacation rental with low mortgage rates if you want to use a mortgage on it. And then you're going to take advantage of the appreciation of the, of the asset. You're also going to take advantage of the inflation uh, rate of the rental cost but then your mortgage is still going to stay very, very low. And of course, when I always speak with Alejandro, uh, and it's important to note during this conversation as well, that Alejandro is not an accountant. He's not a CPA and nor am I. So when you're hearing this information, of course, any wise business person who wants to get into the vacation rental space should really verify with their CPA or accountant all the tax consequences regarding the LLCs or or personal ownership of the properties uh, during the due diligence period after Alejandro helps you uh, purchase and acquire a property. There's a couple more things I wanted to get into, Alejandro. What about like duplexes or fourplexes or things like that? Are those things that are that are in demand in the vacation rental space or are those things that you try and stay away from? No, those things are also in demand. Um, I mean, there's a buyer for every for every rental, right? Some people can only afford $150 a day on a rental. Other people can afford $600 a day. So, um, you know, the, the, the fourplexes or the multiplexes are good options uh, for, for vacation rentals and they do rent very well. Right now, there's a situation where um, I happen to have one that uh, fourplex that people, I'm, I'm only renting it on a month to month basis right now because people just want to get away and, and um, you know, they, they take it for a month or several months and then they're working from home. And how long is that situation going to last? I don't know. We ride the wave and then, you know, if necessary, we cut back and say, okay, minimum a week or minimum three days. So the fourplexes and, and do very well, the multiplexes. I would like to add to, I think it's important what you said about about um, getting in now. I mean, I know that there's markets that are, that are hurting on the vacation rental side, New York being one of them. Like everything, there's, there's been an exit in, in some, some areas. Um, some people have bought, you know, 10, 12, 15 um, rentals, right? And they, they bought them with loans and uh, they're under the water because they bought these properties thinking that they were going to make some return and now they're not. So um, not a good idea to leverage yourself so much buying um, all these properties. But for the new investor, it might be a great opportunity to get in and scoop up one of these uh, units that are going to be, you know, maybe falling in default from, from the, the current buyer because there's no, not enough rentals. And if, if you project yourself, you know, to the future, I mean, we think uh, COVID will pass like everything passes and, and things will get back on track. So you may be able to get a vacation rental at the right price, even with a mortgage, make good money. Um, you may have to wait a few months before it actually produces what you want to produce. So um, that's that, that aspect of, of uh, looking to the future. See, that's, that's a great point. And, and Alejandro, you know, I may be shooting myself in the foot because after speaking with you, I'm convinced that I want to go buy some, some you know, rental properties in Sedona. So, so I may be shooting myself in the foot because other people are going to see this and I'm going to be competing against them and buying and acquiring property. But I'm ve just very curious. So it's going to be different throughout the United States. It's going to be different throughout the world for people watching this. And we have people that watch the show all over the world, but let's just focus in on Sedona just for a minute. So what, if I wanted to buy a, a vacation rental solely for vacation rental as an investment, and I wanted, let's say to get a mortgage on the vacation rental based on what you're seeing in Sedona, what, 
sort of kind of home and what price point would be the best kind of home and the best price point to buy to get my best return on an investment right now? I think you're definitely looking at uh, the 600 to 750 price range. Um, and, um, you know, it's an investment property, so you will need 20% down um, on any mortgage situation, right? So that, that would um, provide you probably the best return on your investment uh, right now. Sedona has a beauty that's not going to go away. I mean, the red rocks and the scenery here, um, there's only 17,000 people like us that live here full time. Uh, we have 4 million tourists that come every year. And, and um, that's not going to change if anything because of, of uh, worldwide unrest, pandemics, and other things. People are going to be traveling more locally. So, um, you know, even if there's more vacation rentals, the, the market for the demand for, for, for rentals in this area continues to increase. I've been doing this for 12 years and uh, every year people say, well, there's already too many, you think this is gonna continue. And um, you know, again, it's a trend. Will, will all these applications that, that we have on our phones <laughs> uh, go back to where they were you know, five, 10 years ago, no, they'll continue to expand and grow. And as I said, as people realize that it's better to own two homes than one big home, the trend's going to get even stronger, right, Andy? And uh, yeah, you should get, a, should get a vacation rental home here. One, one point that we haven't discussed is there's, there's a um, perceived, and it's more a perceived than a real um, image, that people have that it's bad to have a vacation rental and the neighbors and you know oh it's complicated and the noise and you know when you look at the facts and um i've been in this business for a while and, and i'm tired of hearing this i went last year to the city of sedona and to the police department and i got all the complaints that have been filed in the city for everything both places, the city and police department, and less than 1% of those complaints were related to vacation rentals. Um, actually, vacation rentals bring up neighborhoods. They, people buy them, they improve them, they keep them you know, spotty clean and polished and landscaped, and, and they have to be that way. So they actually bring up property values in the neighborhood. In Sedona, they, they blame that you know, there's increased traffic in Sedona because of the vacation rentals. And that's nonsense. The houses that are being used for vacation rentals were being used for something else before, maybe a permanent rental or maybe the people that were living here. There, nobody has built new homes for vacation rentals specifically, or, or very few of them, if any. So how can you blame that there's traffic because these homes are, they change their use. The traffic's always been there for those homes. Uh, traffic is increasing in Sedona because more people are coming and it's a lovely town to be in. That's, that's great. And Alejandro, you know, I know there's sometimes people from out of state or, or in state, but not from Sedona that call you up and say, Alex, listen, I want to buy a vacation rental. I believe in Sedona. I want you to handle it all for me. I want you to find the property for me. I want you to, you know, give me some ideas and send them over to me. And you sort of are the are sort of the, 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 the general manager, if you will, for these people from out of state and in-state out of the area that want to buy and get into the business. So people watching this, obviously, they're going to see that, you know, you're one of the top players in the field, especially in your area, and they're going to want to reach out to you uh, to talk about this opportunity. Let's give some ways in which people can contact you uh, who see the show today and might want to Put their, put their toe in the ring in this vacation rental in such a beautiful place like Sedona. Uh, so how can people get a hold of you, Alex? Several ways. So um, I'm listed on, on um, you can Google me by Alejandro at Russ Lyons Sotheby's, um, which is obviously one of the, it's the biggest brokerage in, in Arizona. We do over $3 billion a year in, in, in Arizona. And it's one of the biggest in the U.S. So through through our brokerage, it's Russ Lyon, 
My number, my phone number is 928-821-8552. That's another way you can call me directly. Or go to my website, uh, AG, letter A, letter G, number four, letter R, letter E, dot com, AG4RE. So it's my initials for realestate.com, AG4RE, dot com, and you can find me there. That's awesome. And, and Alejandro is known for getting back to people quickly and uh, being available as a professional real estate expert. So uh, him giving out his cell phone number just shows how, uh, how engaged he wants to be with his potential clients and his customer base. And Russ Lyon Sotheby's is very lucky to have Alejandro on the, on the roster. So Alejandro, I wanted to thank you so much for talking about Sedona and more specifically the uh, rental market. I think it's very interesting and it's certainly uh, a great time to take a look uh, for the people watching the show to reach out to someone like Alejandro and at least have a conversation to see if this fits your investment portfolio objectives which is really a great way to look at this. If you have a portfolio, maybe the investment property game is just part of an overall portfolio uh, for a sophisticated investor. And Alejandro definitely has the information that will help you out. So Alex, thanks so much for being on the show and congratulations on your great success. Thank you, Andy. It's been a pleasure to be here with you and uh, thank you for all this time and very intriguing questions that you you flew at me. Thank you. Thank you.